abused. That is one of the disadvantages of delegated legislature. Now, I shall ask you a few questions and I believe you should be able to respond to them. First, what is the rule of law? Second, what are the limitations to the rule of law? Again, what is your understanding of separation of powers? Let's start with the first question. What is the rule of law? We said in this class that the rule of law is simply the idea that everyone is equal for the law, the supremacy of the law. Second, what are the limitations to the rule of law? Of course, when people are tried in special courts, because they are quote and unquote special people, that is a violation of the rule of law. Or rather, yes, that's a limitation or an impediment to the rule of law. Again, when people are arrested and are not tried or charged to the court and allowed to stay in prison for many years waiting for trial, that is an impediment to the rule of law. Again, what is your understanding of separation of powers? Well, we have said in this class there is an idea that each is an idea that stipulates that each organ of the government acts independent from the other. We have addressed those questions. We shall now be moving over to the next topic, and that is citizenship. What do you understand by the term citizenship? This simply refers to the membership of a state or country. That is the meaning of citizenship. Now the next is, how does one acquire citizenship? We shall be talking about that under the topic, under the subtopic, acquisition of citizenship. First, one becomes a citizen of any state, into any state or country into which he or she is born. And of course, that is acquisition of citizenship by birth. Second is by marriage or registration. If, for instance, a foreigner gets married to a Nigerian, by virtue of that marriage, the lady in question becomes a Nigerian. In that case, he has acquired the citizenship of Nigeria, for instance, by, by, by marriage. The next is by naturalization. Of course, certain people might decide to become citizens of the country where they abide. If they do so, they must actually meet certain demands of, of the country. And if they do meet those demands and they are given a citizen, citizenship of those country or that country, hence, one can say that they have acquired citizenship of that country by naturalization. The next thing we want to talk about is the rights of a citizen. Yes, every member of a state or of a country deserves some measure of rights. What do we mean by the rights of a citizen anyway? It is the privileges of a citizen which the state gives to the citizen. They include civil rights and political rights. If a citizen enjoys the rights as a citizen, of course, to balance it, such a citizen must equally have some duties he must perform in the state. Now, what are the duties of a citizen? It simply means responsibility the citizen owes the state, and of course, to himself. The state does his bid to the citizen. The citizen does his or her bid to the state. Next is the obligation of a citizen. What do we mean by the obligation of a citizen? It actually refers to the performances of all civil actions which directly or indirectly contribute to the effective government. They include voting in an election, obeying authorities, and the rest. We shall now talk about the differences between citizens and non-citizens. Of course, Citizens and non-citizens would not enjoy the same freedom. There are certain things a citizen enjoys that a non-citizen does not. These are the things we want to briefly point out. One, citizens hold elective positions, but non-citizens do not. If you are not a citizen of any country, you are not expected to own or rather to hold an elective position. But a non-citizen is free to hold an elective position. Again. Citizens have free entry into their country. Non-citizens do not. No one is going to ask you for a visa, for instance, if you're, a, if, you're, if you're a citizen of Nigeria. But any citizen, that any person that is not a citizen of Nigeria, 
and he tends to come to Nigeria much first for acquire his or her visa. He does not have free movement into this country. The third one is that citizens cannot be deported. But non-citizens, if they do not live by the rules and regulation guiding members of the country or the state, they stand a chance of being deported back to their country. Let us now go over to the next topic, and that is political parties. And I'm sure you've heard this term before. We shall quickly talk about what we mean by political parties. What, do they, what does it mean? It means the association of men and women who have similar views and organize themselves to obtain political power and control machinery of the, of the government. Now, a number of things stand out in this definition. Organized group of persons, both men, men and women. But of course, their intention is to capture power and control the machinery of the government. Now, how is a political party organized? We shall be looking at that under the subtopic organization. Political parties are organized at both the national level, the state level, and of course the local level. That is how they are organized. The next is functions of political party. How does the political party function? How do they function? We're going to look into three main functions of political parties. One, winning an election and controlling the government. One may want to say that is the main function of the political party. That is why they are organized. They want to seize power. They want to be at the helm of affairs. They want to recruit leaders. Of course, they want to present candidates to win election. The next is political socialization. Yes, I mean the other function of political parties is political socialization. They involve in the teaching and educating of the masses about the system of government being practiced, educate them about how they are going to go out for an election, how, what they are supposed to know before they vote, who they are supposed to vote, sell their manifestos to the citizens. These are what they do, what they do as a way of socializing the citizens politically. And the final function of the political party, that, of political parties that I want to discuss here now, is recruitment of leaders. Of course, this actually takes from the first one, which is winning election and controlling government. One of their functions is to recruit leaders into political offices. We are done with the function of political parties. We shall now be talking about types of political parties. There are two broad categories of political parties, and they are mass party and elite party. The mass party it's a party that recruits both men and adult men and female, no matter their walks of life, no matter where they come from, no matter the social ladder they occupy. That party is referred to as the mass party. The next is the elite party. The elite party does not recruit people from all nooks and crannies of the society. They are interested in the nobles in the society. Such category of party is what we are referred to as elite party. The next is party system. What do we mean by party system? This is a type of governmental political arrangement in which political parties are permitted to operate for the purpose of forming a government. This is what we mean by party system. Now, we shall be talking about types of party system. Yes, we are going to be considering three types of party system. One, one party system. The second, two-party system. And the third, multi-party system. We shall be taking them one at a time. One-party system. This is a situation where one political party is recognized in a state. It does not mean that there could not be other political parties. There could be other political parties. But the only political party that is re constitutionally recognized is just one party. Such a system could be said to be practicing one party system. The next is two party system. Of course, just like we said in the first instance, in a two party state, two political parties are duly recognized by the constitution. Other politi political parties could be there, but they could just be normative, ineffectual. In that case, we say the system is practicing two party system. The next is multi-party system. What obtains here in Nigeria? You have a whole lot of parties organized.